the last talk. Uh, this is going to be by Steven Surkron. Uh, he's a professor in medical imaging in University of Sheffield and an expert in quantitative MRI. He holds a PhD in, in perfusion MRI from the Free University of Brussels, and he did postdoctoral research in the Ludwig Maximilian University of Munich before taking up a lectureship in the University of Leeds. Much of his current work involves clinical studies on non-invasive assessment of chronic kidney and liver disease to determine if quantitative MRI can improve prognosis and prediction of treatment effects. And of course, he's been uh, very strongly involved with uh, Open Science Initiative in perfusion imaging. And I think this is what you're going uh, to tell us about, right, Stephen? So right. Yeah. thank you and the floor is yours. Okay, thank you uh, for the introduction and, and thank you also to the organizers for putting together again a fantastic program on MRI together. Uh, it's it's not straightforward, as Petra said in the beginning, to, to find out something that's balanced across the globe, across time zones, across all uh, career stages and genders. So it's it's great that you managed to pull it off and it looks very exciting. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll change tack a little bit um, and I'll talk about the Open Science Initiative in Perfusion Imaging which is something that we uh, started setting up about five years ago now, 2018, through the ISM Marine Perfusion Study Group. Um, it, um, it, it, the, 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 uh, it's, it's now come to more of a mature stage of a project that seems like it could be uh, running for a longer period of time. So I'll just tell you a little bit about what it is, where it comes from, how we set it up, and then also what you can find there. It's specifically targeted for people working in perfusion, uh, both A ASL and contrast agent-based perfusion. Um, but I think even if you're not in working in this area, it'll be useful, I think, as kind of a template for for if you if you feel like there's a, there's a need to set something similar up in your area, it could be maybe a good example to see how to, how to go about it and, and where it could land. I'll, I'll just share my screen now. Okay, so before I go and talk about OCP, it's not the only initiative. I just wanted to point out the MRS Hub as well, which is a very nice equivalent initiative from the uh, MR spectroscopy group in the ISMRM. So that, that also exists and is something that you can look at as, a, as another example of how this can work in a different area. But uh, OCP itself, um, if you want to know more about it, the website here is uh, it's ocp.ismrm.org. You can also just do ocp.org and it will get you there uh, as well. So it's now folded under the ISMRM website. And as you can see here, it's a bit in a transition at the moment. Uh, it used to be a website that existed on OCP, on GitHub, sorry, that we managed fully by ourselves um, uh, since two years, we decided to integrate this more closely under the ISMRM, so it's now managed on the ISMRM pages and sits under the ISMRM uh, global website. But um, so, and at the moment, it's a bit in transition, so you'll see some older contents, but more complete on the older website, and then you'll see the new, more up-to-date content on the ISMRM website, but it's still a little bit in development. Um, yeah, so where this comes from for me, and I think for a lot of people, uh, working in this area, I did my PhD in in 2005, so almost um, almost getting to, to 20 years ago. So this was 10 years after PH after perfusion as a field kind of started in in uh, in MR, and um, I think I had a feeling that a lot of people also have that, especially if you work on image analysis and image processing, that you end up redeveloping code and software that you just know that other people have developed already. Um, and it just felt like a very inefficient way of working to just redevelop it. You, you feel like it should be possible for making your developments available so that the next person doesn't have to start over from scratch. That seems like an easy, uh, an easy question, an easy problem to solve, but actually, uh, there is quite a lot of overhead involved in taking something that you've developed and, and make it available and making sure that everybody else can and wants to use it as well. So I realized 15 years after that, when we were going towards 2018, that actually was a slightly different situation. There were like lots of little software tools that were available, 
but all in different languages, all different approaches, command line, graphical interface, Python, MATLAB, IDL. And there was nothing really that was emerging as kind of a community tool that everybody was using. So, so basically 15 years later, it was pretty much the same situation still. Again, if you're a new PhD student working in Perfusion, you kind of had to redevelop a lot of things from scratch, even though they had been done before. So. So we thought in 2018 I became um, I became uh, I was elected into the perfusion study group on the ICMRM. I thought maybe it's a good time now to start doing something about this. And, and so I I realized that if if you want to develop tools that are used by everyone by the community, they have to be developed by the community uh, rather than by individuals who then hope that everybody else will just use them. So we kind of took a step back and um, and we 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 started. Um, getting some people together um, to, to develop some resources as a community together with as many people as possible. As well. I'll talk a little bit in a second of how we did this, but this is where we are now. So five years later, um, you can you can go on the website here. There is some, some detail if you go through the links. So for instance, here at the end, um, if you go on this section, you will come to a list of uh, resources that are already available. Let's see if it works. It might be that the internet is a little bit too slow for me to click through everything here, but you will see, for instance, here, the kind of overview of the resources that have been developed over the past uh, five years. So, so we originally wanted to do just open source, but after we consulted with the community, uh, the interest seemed to be much broader in not just software, but also uh, uh, standardization, um, education data, and inventory. So, so we broadened it out. And, and for instance, here, you will find um, a list of available software tools that is um, nicely collected, nicely documented um, with some detail about what extent they are available, uh, are supported, the kind of functionality that they have, etc. So this has been quite a lot of work to assemble that. And I think if you are now starting in Perfusion, this is already quite a very big help that you can just go there and, it, and you can know that you have a fairly complete overview of, of tools that are available for you uh, to use. Some commercial, some, some are open source, it's lifting everything at the moment. Um, then, then this has also been a, a lot of work. I'll show the, the, the contrast agent based ones because I know these best, but everything has been done twice. So once for contrast agent based techniques and once for, for ASL. So this is a lexicon that's been put together by a separate uh, task force working on the OCP. So basically what they did is just agree on a long list of standardized names, definitions, and, and notations. And, uh, and that's been a very important foundation, actually, for, for then later on also building standardized, um, standardized software and um, repositories. Big, big part of the confusion sometimes around methodology is just that people use uh, the same names for different things or use different names for the same things. And it becomes very hard sometimes to understand what exactly people are talking about. So, so having everything defined in detail uh, with notations, with units, with definitions, with links and everything will really help in the future to, to, to avoid a lot of that perfusion about the language of perfusion itself. And the idea is that also these uh, these terms are then increasingly adopted by the community. And because this is a community effort, we already see that people are starting to use this. So if you're working in Perfusion, please please go there and try to uh, uh, follow the, the definitions that are laid out here. Um, so that's a lexicon. And then um, there's also software itself, of course. Um, you will see here three, IVIM is a new uh, development. These two have been done in the first phase. So for, for software, the first phase basically consisted of just asking the community, everyone involved in Perfusion, to just uh, contribute bits of code that they were using locally. And there were bits of code that were designed to address a very specific bits of functionality. Uh, for instance, 
an AIF, a Parker AIF, or a Tofts model, or an extended Tofts model, any, the kind of the basic building blocks of perfusion imaging. So they collected from lots of people um, a bits of software functionality that addressed these same aims, and then they had a systematic process of harmonizing these, of comparing these, of testing them against common benchmarks to see you know whether whether implementation differences may may had had a big effect on on results. So you can see a nice summary here of the of the test results that were obtained. So what's happening now for this software specifically is just taking these bits of code that were contributed and they're now being packaged up in a user friendly uh, Python package that you can use like any any common uh, Python package. So that's currently in development. Uh, there's a lot of work on the website. So there are data inventories. There's been some work on um, on collecting information about existing phantoms, digital and physical phantoms. Um, as you see here, uh, as I mentioned, this website is in development, so not all the links are are accurate at the moment. So please um, please remember that. There's a the challenges the challenges here were two uh, very successful challenges that were set up in ASL and DSC over the past few years that have now also just published um, in ISMRM, and you can again the incorrect link you will see that. Uh, hopefully getting fixed very soon. Uh, if you wanna, if you wanna currently find the uh, the correct links and the, uh, the 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 current information, you can go back to the older website, which is also still there. Uh, I'll just show you here. So this is the current website. If you go here, you come to the new website, the the older website. Sorry. Um, and this still has um, slightly outdated, but at the moment a little bit more um, complete information. So the um, the information about the challenges, for instance, you will find here, and it has some detail about who put together the challenge um, and, and where you could find the, the the definitions and the results. So. Um, that's where we are at the moment. As you can see, it's a project that is in development and is going to is going to develop further over the next few years. Um, but it has been, I think, very successful considering we started this from scratch. Um, there's a there's a GitHub page here where you can find all the links to the raw code that has been developed and that is currently in development. And a lot of this has also led to publications that have been um, that have been published or have just been accepted in ISMRM. So you'll see that sorry in uh, in MRM, we see that these are all still in in early view. This is the the report of the ASL uh, lexicon, which you can find. Um, this is the report of the uh, DC lexicon. Then um, there's the code repository, which I've just shown. So all of these also led to nice, nice papers in in ISMRM. The challenges I think are not yet available in OpenView, but I believe they have been accepted for publication. But you can find them as um, as abstract on the um, previous ISMRM meetings. So a, a little bit maybe about how this works. So this this was a a, a focus on the outputs of the project. Um, how is this managed uh, in the background? There's some links to uh, the, the governance of OCP on the website as well. You can find uh, these documents, for instance. So this is something that we we set up all the way in the beginning of the project in 2019, which describes the general governance of uh, of OCP, so how it's run, and the way we the way we set it up was basically it was ultimately linked to the ISMRM Perfusion Study Group, separate from it, but but linked to it as a kind of a permanent driver of the whole system. We had a strategy board, so these were more senior advisors that we spoke to just once or twice per year to get input on where they felt like the, um, the, the, the field or the project was going. Um, then 
at the, at the basis. So these are the groups that do the actual work. So each of these aims was addressed by a very specific task force that we put together. And each task force was led by a, a senior lead and then a junior co-lead. So typically um, uh, someone with a PI and then a PhD student or a postdoc who did this together with then anybody else who wanted to join in. So each of these task forces addressed one of the objectives and then the task forces together with the management board came together to kind of every, every few months discuss the state of the project. And we defined from the very beginning very precisely like what the roles of each of these groups were, what the expectations were, but but also you know what the return would be if you chose to evolve in that. So we were very explicit, for instance, that if people um, I'll show you here, if people spend time um, in a task force, which is where the, really the labor intensive part of the work sits, that if you join a task force and you take uh, responsibility for leading it, that you might have to do quite a lot of work, but in the end, the return will be that you will be a first author as a junior colleague and a senior author as a, as a senior colleague. So it was quite clear from the beginning that that if you choose to invest time, there would be also a trade off um, of people towards the end. And I think that was a very important part of getting the momentum going uh, in the very beginning. So, so that's how it's been set up from the from the beginning. Uh, so we wrote initially a very brief strategic plan describing the global aim and then the very specific aims, software, um, um, data, consensus, guidelines, etc. So just a simple high level document that's probably not going to be changed, be changing too much over time and that will remain like the, the global mission statement for city um, long term. And then, um, to manage the actual work, we set up um, a detailed um, roadmap. There was one, I'll just show you here initially. So there was one for the first phase of OCP in uh, 2020. You can find all these documents via links on the website. So, so we set up the work in two-year plans. Now the first year was 2020 to 2022, always going from ISMRM in May till uh, ISMRM in May two years later. And so, so this is the, the, the group of task force leads and colleagues that put this put this together um, together. And uh, and basically what we did at the beginning of the cycle for each of those task forces, so we defined their aims very specifically, but then we, we were very detailed and very specific about what they would deliver exactly. Um, and we listed that as deliverables that were described, but then also the process leading up to it. So each of those task forces had like a detailed set of, or a relatively detailed set of milestones that were typically steps that they would be taking in every, every two, three months of the project. And that we would also verify and evaluate after three months if, if one of the task forces was struggling to make their milestones that we would see where we could help out and and, um, and, and support them, or um, maybe sometimes revise the work plan and see um, how, it, how it could be done differently to make the same objective. So we kind of used this as a living document that was revised and modified um, um, every three months on a meeting, and it was really helpful I think, to kind of Keep, keep the development on track and the results are there. I think a number of publications after two years, which was quite a good result. So, so there's now a new, a new group of people leading it for the next three years. And there's a new roadmap that's, that's been developed and that's now uh, being worked through. Um, so a lot of this work is ongoing, but I think um, you, can still, you can still join this if you are already and available and willing do that so it's not like a closed uh, group okay I'm, I'm going to just say a little bit about how we set this up from the very beginning uh, not too long just just to give you a, uh, a bit of an idea of how we went about it and the lessons that we've learned and and maybe it's useful if you want to start setting something up like that yourself so I put here um, the, the image of Laura on there who 
who um, worked with me on this in the very beginning. So I became um, um, secretary of the ISM Marine Perfusion Study Group. And at the same time, Laura became uh, the, the trainee representative on the study group. We both had an interest in doing something around open science. So in the very beginning, Laura and me worked together in, um, in getting this moving. And so the way we went about it is described also in another uh, paper that's been accepted as an uh, as an editorial in the in MRM, which you can find online now or open access, of course. It describes a little bit the process that we went through to kind of gradually build up the momentum and get people involved in this process. And the first thing we did uh, in 2018 was actually just send out a survey to the perfusion study group and anyone else we could think of to ask effectively, do you think this is a good idea? Would you like to get involved? And if you want to get involved, what do you think we should be doing? What should we be focusing on? And um, and um, and what should the aims be? So we got a very good response on that actually and uh, 100, 102 people got back with detailed responses. Everybody was very supportive of doing something around open science. And it was clear that this feeling that we had that that there must be a more efficient way of working than, than always redeveloping things from scratch is something that a lot of people also had. So we kind of felt encouraged to move forward with this. The momentum and the interest was clearly there. Um, so then, then, then comes a step of actually setting it up. And this was in a way the difficult bit because everybody wants this, everybody knows we need it, um, but it's also a lot of work and there's no money for it, right? This was not a funded project. It was relying 100% on volunteer activity. And so effectively what we had to do was convince a lot of people uh, to take time out from their current activities and nobody has spare time, right? Nobody's waiting. For, for 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 something nobody's keeping some time free while waiting for something else to come along so everybody's busy so we, you have to convince a lot of people to take time out of their current activities and invest it in this instead and so so that was difficult in the beginning but we built it up gradually so we we, we defined a group of founders so there were people that came back to us to say that they wanted to help a lot so we organized uh, some events you can actually have a look at them um, at the progression over time, if you go on the older website, there's a, a news page. If you scroll through the bottom, you can kind of see how the development went over time. So, so we we started with a, a, a symposium, a member initiated symposium. We proposed that for the ISM ring that was accepted. We ran it. Um, it was really well attended, actually, for something quite as specific as, as open science in perfusion. It was really well attended. We organized a seminar also in the in the Friday after ISMRM, um, where we worked out some more detail. Then we spent the next six months to write the governance, to, to come up with the roadmap, gradually, gradually building up the interest, finding people who would lead the task forces, uh, and then at some point we felt we had sufficient critical mass to actually launch it. And then we said like, okay, the next ISMRM is the start of our roadmap. And then we started gradually going through this um, through this process of, of following up the milestones. And so what's been very important is also very early on in the process. So you see in June, 2020, we had a conversation with, uh, with the editor of MRM, uh, Peter Jezzard, and he, agreed that if we uh, published output for a CP that um, of course had to go through the standard review process in, a, in MRM, but if it passed the review process, they would kind of group it together in a, in, a, in a virtual issue and make sure to try and put all the papers together in the same MRM issue. So we kind of created a very clear target, uh, a very clear deadline also, but a very clear commitment from, from MRM to publish the, the outputs if they were of sufficient quality. So it really helped to kind of focus and make sure that we got everything done in time. So so yeah, that's that's where we were. So we finished this first phase in uh, 22, as you can see here. 
we wrapped it up, we got most of the papers out. Um, and then in, in 2022, if I got it right, yes, 2022, um, new people joined the leadership team, Laura and me uh, stepped down and uh, and a new roadmap was developed, which is now in, in, in progress. And I think uh, the focus of that is a lot more in rather than collecting and developing more resources is taking what's already there and kind of package it up so it really becomes very user friendly and, and easy to use by, uh, by other people. So I just wanted to end by saying if you are working in this area, um, the, the work for the second roadmap is up, up and coming, but um, I'm sure they'll be very happy for people who join. So if you want to help out, please just find the links find the area that you're working in, get in touch with, uh, with the task force lead and, um, and offer to help because I'm sure it's